I'm with uh, Nicholas Bernheim of Tornaboni Gallery, which is based in Paris. And we're yeah. standing in front of this rather magnificent uh, Boetti painting. Yeah. Well, painting is the wrong word. Yeah, it's an embroidery. Actually. It's an embroidery. Yes. So can you tell me something about this work, which is, I would say, one of the highlights of the fair? And so basically, Boetti um, is this art, Italian artist um, who started really working in the 70s up to the, he died in 95. Mm -hmm. And um, he was a conceptual artist. So in his head, he was creating concept, but he was never executing anything. So here in the Tuto, it's really, I would say, the epitome of his work. It's really the idea of having everything in it. Like the whole world is in this. And I think it should be seen as, you know, probably the epitome of his work and, and, and one of his masterpieces. Yes, yeah. and it's, it's from the series. It's, yeah, it's, the Tuto is a series of his work right. he did. So he did several ones. Uh, there aren't that many compared, like, there's much less Tuto, for example, than Mappas. But this would be um, the largest one? This is by far the largest. Yeah. Yeah. We're standing in front of a Picasso painting, a yes. late Picasso painting. Yes. And could you tell us something about the work? Well, you know, I, as you know, one of my specialties is Basquiat. And I very much relate late Picasso paintings to Basquiat because I think there's a very strong language between late Picasso and Basquiat. Now, this painting here is from 1971. Picasso was 90 years old. And when I look at that painting, it looks incredibly fresh to me. It looks like if it's a young artist who did it, you know, this morning. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm so attracted to late Picasso. Yeah, and you're quite right. I mean, in terms of not only the market, but critically in terms of late Picassos, it was sort of like he had gone off the deep end or something. Or yes, exactly. I mean, and, that, and that's why Picasso is such a genius, because he was never afraid to change his style or change yeah. his... Uh, you know, yeah, his, his work, I yeah. mean, you know, absolutely amazing. So, we're at Elvira Gonzalez Gallery, which is based in Madrid, standing here with Fernando Mione, and we're in a one-person show of Robert Mangold. And, Fernando, tell me what the inspiration or idea about doing the show now here at Art Basel, Miami Beach. Uh, we felt that the, relative to his peers, uh, he was uh, undervalued. We thought the, uh, the Miami Basel was the, the perfect platform to do a one-man uh, show of, uh, of Mangol. It's actually a retrospective in the sense of it goes from the 1960s to 2005 or six, Correct. and um, which must have been quite a project to pull all these paintings together. They're how many? 14? Uh, pain, paintings, uh, we have 11. Mm -hmm. And as you said, yes, uh, we have uh, 60s, 70s, uh, and so forth. Here we put together a group of abstraction, constructivism, uh, without the labels. So when you come here and you look at something like that, and you're in a contemporary mindset, you think, oh my god, this is Toby. Um, if you would be the uh, classic scholar, you would say, oh my god, that's a Rochenko. Mm -hmm. It happens to be a Rochenko. But mm -hmm. the nice part about this installation and the effect that it has on the visitor is that you don't know, but you want to know. Mm -hmm. And you're more drawn in to look at the work mm -hmm. without having already the name and the label and the, and the artist. And I think that's really the, the, the magic of this, of this right. exhibition, is that people who know and don't know feel equally intrigued. So, so here you have actually masterpieces together. You have a Bacon, you have a Picasso, you have a Miro, you have a Torres Cassier, you have a Lamb, and you have a very important Indiana. And normally these things would never hang together. A museum couldn't do it, but right. a gallery can, and at an art fair we can. And so we, we provoke you. And so if you were going to uh, pick a work here out of this Ceylon style to uh, you know, hang in your study or... Oh, in my study, I certainly uh, would uh, work with uh, Malevich and Rochenko drawings. I think mm -hmm. it's amazing. But if I would have a very large study, I would go for the Motherwell. For the Motherwell. Which is um, maybe the pièce de résistance in this, in this booth because it is something that was done for General Electric. It's a six-meter-long painting. 
it's a complete homage to Matisse's dance in the Barnes Foundation. Mm. And um, it's sort of this powerful American way of looking at European art and making something totally new out of it and powerful.